So thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. My pleasure. And it was a really nice talk you gave today at the IDA, even mm -hmm. though you're a bit jet lagged. Mm -hmm. So um, I really liked when you started your talk that you said that you know NHP model is not just a bag, it's just not it's not just a model that can be used for HIV immunity. Mm -hmm. You have to really think about your question. Mm -hmm. So may I please elaborate on um how you use HIV models and like. In what aspects do you use a certain um, species of macaque compared to another? Right. So it all depends upon uh, what question you, you want to answer. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Indian origin rhesus macaque is the, the model that most people use because it can be infected with a cousin of HIV mm -hmm. uh, called simian immunodeficiency virus. Mm -hmm. uh, and this virus infects the, the monkeys very similar to the way uh, HIV infects humans. It actually causes disease in a very similar way that HIV causes disease in humans. Mm -hmm. It just does so in a much shorter uh, time frame. So if you want to look at uh, ways that HIV uh, causes disease, SIV infection of, of macaques is a good way to look, uh, is a good model uh, to use. Uh, but there are other models that you might want to consider. So uh, H, uh, HIV-2, uh, which is similar to HIV-1, mm -hmm. is actually the same virus uh, as SIV that we use to infect uh, rhesus macaques. Oh. Uh, but when that virus uh, infects sooty mangabees, uh, which is a, you know, another monkey species, mm -hmm. it doesn't cause any disease. Uh, similarly, when uh, you use uh, SIV MAC251 to infect uh, African green monkeys, you don't get any disease. So depending upon the, the exact question you want to address, you can look at differences between uh, this monkey species, this virus, uh, and you can, you can come up with a, a way of addressing specific questions. One, just one other aspect is that for transmission uh, of HIV, we often use a virus called SHIV. Mm -hmm. So this is a, an SIV where, you, where you've taken the, uh, the envelope of HIV and you've put it into uh, the uh, SIV. And, and what that allows you to do is to look at uh, HIV-specific antibodies and see whether you can block infection of HIV. Uh, of that virus with actual human antibodies. When you talk about disease, do you mean that the CD4 cells can get infected, but there's not as much depletion, or the viral load is not that high, or they don't induce antibodies? Uh, so, so some some uh, viruses. Uh, uh, well, let me, let me put it this way. Uh, so, if you take certain shivs, so these are. SIVs, where you put in an HIV envelope, they work very well for studying uh, infection because they infect uh, monkeys very similar to, to the way HIV infects uh, humans, but they tend to be cleared over time. So, so some of them will actually go on and lead to CD4 depletion, etc. But some of them, over a couple of years, they just get eliminated from the, the monkey. And that's something that obviously doesn't happen mm -hmm. with HIV infection in humans. If you get infected, yeah. uh, you go on. And, and aside from a few long-term survivors, you, you progress. Yes. Uh, and even if you don't progress, if you're one of those long-term survivors, you certainly don't clear the virus yes. uh, from your body. Okay. Thank you for the clarity. You also focus on understanding um, functions of follicular CD8 T cells. Mm -hmm. So why why do you focus on them specifically in HIV immunity? Why are they so important? Yeah. Well, and the reason we look at follicular CD8 T cells, I mean, first of all, we were studying uh, the structure of lymph nodes where we found uh, uh, that most of the virus replicates. And so if you want to look at an immune response that's controlling that infection, you have to look at the local immune response. Mm -hmm. It's been known for many years that CD8 T cells are, are particularly important in controlling viral replication. Mm -hmm. uh, so since most of the virus replication is in these areas called germinal centers, we simply asked, you know, are uh, CD8 T cells in these areas? And it turns out there are some CD8 T cells there. Mm -hmm. They're called follicular CD8 T cells. Uh, and actually, 
uh, Mike Betts uh, was the one who, who recently showed that uh, while the, there are follicular CD8 T cells there, uh, they don't seem to kill very well. Yeah. Uh, and actually, there isn't an inverse correlation uh, between the, the virus uh, and follicular CD8 T cells. There's actually a direct correlation. So the more virus you have, the more follicular CD8 T cells. Um, one of the reasons we decided to look at them is because of a, a study we did with Malcolm Martin, where he gave antibodies very soon after infection uh, to uh, monkeys. Uh, and uh, he showed that about half those monkeys became long-term non-progressors. Uh, and when we looked at what uh, differentiated those monkeys from monkeys that didn't progress, it was the presence of these follicular CD8 T cells, suggesting that they have some role in controlling viral replication. Mm -hmm. um, so how do these follicular CD8 T cells actually accumulate in the B cell follicle of the germinal center? Yeah, it, it appears as though they, they accumulate because they're responding to inflammatory signals. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you get infection in the lymph node, uh, you actually get infiltration of what we call inflammatory monocytes. Mm -hmm. These are monocytes that express CD14 and CD16. Uh, and they uh, liberate different cytokines and chemokines. One of those important uh, molecules is IP10. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, all of the CD8 T cells in the lymph node in general express C CXCR3, uh, and uh, IP10 is one of the ligands for CXCR3. So we think that these uh, follicular CD8 T cells are following a gradient of IP10 into the germinal center. So they express CXCR3 and CXCR5. Yes, CXCR3 and CXCR5, and the CXCR5 will allow them to to follow uh, the uh, the IL-13, no, not the IL-13, the, the CCL-13 uh, gradient also. Okay. Um, and lastly, what are bispecific antibodies and how have you used them in your research? So bispecific antibodies are antibodies that instead of uh, having uh, just a single binding uh, specificity, you mm -hmm. engineer them so that they have two, at least two different uh, binding specificities. In our case, one of those is for HIV envelope, and the other is for CD3. Uh, so what this does is that the anti-envelope portion will bind to an infected cell that's expressing the envelope on the cell surface. The other arm of the antibody uh, will uh, bind to CD3 cells, uh, specifically a, a cytotoxic uh, CD8 T cell. Uh, it will bring those two cells together and allow the CD8 T cell to be activated and kill the HIV-expressing uh, cell. So in the germinal center, where we know we have lots of viral replication and we have follicular CD8 T cells, but that, uh, as Mike Betts has shown, don't kill well, mm -hmm. we can use these bispecific antibodies uh, to actually jazz up those CD8 T cells and to have them specifically kill the HIV-infected cells. So this is killing that's mediated by perforin and granzyme, or is it a fast fas cytotoxic mediation? Yeah, it, it's unclear which it is. It is certainly uh, it is it is certainly caspase mediated, which suggests that it's uh, that it's uh, uh, perforin mediated, but uh, we don't know. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for agreeing to the interview. My my pleasure.